right. Now, down here, we need to indicate the course of the river. So again, I'm going to just zoom in here and freehand it because it's organic. Control Z, freehand it because it's all organic and run off the river in this way down there. do that and you'll see why in a little bit because now I'm going to go back to my solid rock make another layer and call this water and I'm already going to make the opacity 50% now I shall select a color a blue color for water Ah, <laughs> now the reason why I did that is because I'm an idiot. A complete idiot. Ah, yes, with um, Paint Shop, to go back one step is Control Z, to go back two steps is Control Alt Z, because reasons. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to go firstly to Cave, our layer. Magic selection tool and select that area there, then come down to water and there, now it's doing what it's supposed to do. Thank you very much for playing. Right. Now we can clearly see where the water is and is not. We did want to create some more water references a little earlier on. So to that answer, we will come back here. I'm going to select holding down the alt button with my brush tool selected uh, I'm not going to do that uh, yes I am uh, no I'm not sorry okay so what I'm doing is I uh, made a mistake there I should have kept my water color and you're going to see now why when I come back to it so I'm on cave back to my cave color we're still at size 3 which is fine I'm just going to draw across these stalactites in there and in there and maybe just there. Now magic selection tool holding down the shift key to select multiple areas, spacebar to move, shift again to hold down multiple areas, back to my water layer, change my dominant color to watercolor, back to the fill tool, fill it in to show that certain areas have flooded a little bit. Now, these structures all seem pretty sound. I don't have a problem here with these chambers. Maybe, maybe we can do it to this one, this little fishtail. And what we're going to do is we're going to do the ultimate temptation. So we'll do a little line there. And then we'll do it spilled out to there, maybe. All right. Now I call. Ah, now I've drawn on the wrong layer. So control Z, control Alt Z, back to cave layer, back to pen tool. Open this out again. Now it's bigger, see, always more dramatic. A little beach there. Now we select it. Now we go to our water layer, change our dominant color, fill tool, fill it up. So we've got this little beach here where we can put some treasure. And of course, into this water is going to be some kind of terrific beast of doom that will try to consume them completely because that's just how we roll. I think here we need um, hints of things to come, if they've come in through this area, of course. Never can tell with players where they're going to come from. Just to add a little bit of water in there. Okay. Happiness there, there, and there. All right. Uh, the kitchens, the kitchens need a well and uh, 
we go back to pen tool and we said the bathrooms need wells as well so now we're actually going to go to brush tool to indicate that this is a uh, bathroom this is a kitchen uh, we're now getting to the point where we now start to populate our map with geography we still have to indicate that this is the outside though so there are a couple ways that we can we can do that um, and it's really up to you as to as to your personal preference um, how you want to 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 make that happen um, you could fill this up with green if you're not worried about print uh, issues um, although nowadays everyone seems to be happy to print in color in my day black and white was the cheapest way to go nowadays of course it doesn't really matter whatever looks nicest and whatever you prefer uh, really is the correct answer um, another option which I will show you now um, changes back up to uh, six is to go onto our solid rock layer zoom in and you can literally draw these kind of lines coming off of the structure to indicate sort of height eh, it might not work for everybody but um, kind of works for me this is one of those maps where the um, code the key um, would be a separate page just because the map's so big this page is set up as an A4 page um, I always try and fit things onto A4 you can always print them as A3 they you know maintain this scale and that sort of thing quite well um, but yes this one would definitely fit onto its own page now I did speak about making this a two-level affair but to be perfectly honest with you I've never really seen the reason in this case anyway I don't see why a height elevation would make any difference stairs going up stairs going down I I think personally that this complex is well to be perfectly honest complex enough I don't think it needs a second level if you feel that you wanted to add a second level then by all means go for it now traditionally in Dungeons and Dragons and most dungeon crawlers the uh, idea well there we go that sort of indicates the outer edge of the uh, structure if you like we can do the same on the river course I am um, just finished off the river here simply so that while well, it finishes off um, you can of course erase this edge um, unless you really really obsessing about drawing the surrounding uh, geography uh, I don't see the value of adding in more detailing there um, yeah okay so now we move on to populating an hour and a half into the map design we now populate things we need little s's on those secret doors um, maybe an altar in here and uh, the most important thing is we now need doors so what I now do is I take the uh, column the solid rock all of that and the grid and I turn it into its own folder called the base structure all right I'm taking a sip of coffee which is you have rightly guessed very cold but that's okay all right so doors doors for me we don't need any doors in the caves whatsoever but we need to start somewhere so let's start here um, they might have a door across there for example 
I'll definitely have a door there and there and there and there and there and there and there. And there, and there. Doors are really easy. I choose a different color. I'm done with my water now, he said. No, I'll choose this one. Doors, I usually use a different color for. And then you simply go back to your marquee tool. You make a rectangle. You zoom in. And uh, let's find a nice example where the lines are fairly straight. And I do that on a new layer, which I call doors. Oops. And then you fill it with that color. Control D to get rid of the mask tool. Then you right click on the word door and you go to blending options. Now under blending options, that will pop up. You then need to go for stroke. Now, you don't want to give someone a stroke. It should have picked up your original color. If not, uh, you hold down, um, you select the box, hold down Alt, and then you select the color from the, your map. And one is too small. Six, five, four, three, three, four. I'm going with four. You click on OK. And there you have a door. Again, Alt is your friend. So now, wherever we need a door, you hold down Alt and you just move it into place. And you hold down Alt. Oh my lord, we had a bit of a problem putting the door into the stonework, owning on account that it's irregular like. All right, then if we wanted to do 90 degree doors, which we will need to do, you need to go and turn your show transform controls back on get that little curve i hope you can see it on the video there's a little arched arrow then uh, then and i screw this up but anyway you hold down shift and then you rotate it 90 degrees then you click on ok then you get rid of those show transform controls now the reason why i say you get rid of them is because they become damned irritating if every time you collect you select it it's trying to reshape your door so you turn them off and then it doesn't do that. Now what I should have done is duplicated this door first, which I didn't, so whoops, whoops, that was bad. Okay, I'm going to, um, should have just locked this layer. Okay, it's now locked. I clicked on the little lock symbol here. So now I can't select it, thank the maker. Back to um, these ones. Hey, you said don't select. All right. Sometimes you just have to be careful. Okay, so now we carry on just filling up where we want these doors to be. In this room anyway. Okay, good. Do we want a door there? Yes, of course we do. We don't want any Tom, Dick or Harry just wandering in. Um, let's put it there. Okay. Right. door population I will speed up okay so now all the doors are in place I'm just collapsing them all down whoops Uh, into their final spaces so now we've got doors in there okay very last thing that we need to do and again it depends on how much detailing you want to put in and also whether you uh, because these maps are digital you can choose to um, use them for different things I'm just going to simulate some bars here oops uh, what's happening? Oh, I'm on the door layer, which is still adding the stroke to it. So I'm going to make a new layer here. And just make it a little bit smaller. Clink, clink, clink to represent bars. And purposefully that gap open. Right. So there's bars there. Now, two things popped up that I saw whilst uh, putting in the um, 
doors. One was that this corridor leads directly in, and so this trap would be redundant. So what we're going to do here is we'll put in some bars. That's not very even, is it? Some bars there to indicate that there's a portcullis uh, that prevents any kind of entrance or exit. Uh, it just makes it more difficult, let's put it that way. Then um, also, there's a doorway here that opens up into a column, which is not very pretty. So we are going to erase the door and uh, go back to our cave. Make sure that our brush is set to three. Pen tool and just draw across. Now, why is it not let me do what I wanted it to do? Because this is maybe there. I don't know. Yep, stroke path. Delete. Stroke path. Delete. All right, so this is going to become a little secret space. Now, to do that, I just use text. And uh, text, he said. And I'll just click S to make my secret door there. Alt again is your friend and put it there. We know that we've got another secret door down there. So we'll carefully pull it there. And then we have another one. There, we'll go to our transform tools, hold shift down, rotate it 90 degrees. Yes, turn off transform tools. So we can move it down there. And then we just do the same for over here. I think those were the only secret chambers that we'd put in. Yes, that's pretty much it. There were no secret chambers in the caves. Nothing down there. Nothing there either. No, we're good. All right. Now, in terms of putting in everything else, statues, sinks, those kind of things, we can do that. I prefer to print out the map and then to add it in as we go so that this time round, if I'm using this map with this particular players and the adventure is now talking about a dragon worshipping god, then in the center area in here, I'll then draw in a dragon statue. But if we're maybe talking some kind of water cult, some kind of uh, thing along those lines, then maybe it'll be uh, Triton. This funny shape here, this odd little side room that's ended up where we said we'd put a trap in, you can very easily just with pen indicate trap. You don't have to have a digital map like this. Um, and if you're taking it into things like Roll20 and all that kind of thing, then those you put on later anyway so that they get revealed as players walk over them rather than to show players where they are. Even the secret doors could be a problem if you wanted to, to uh, really think about it. All right, so I think that's pretty much it. The only thing that's left to do as far as I can see is to zoom in. And on the cave layer, just to uh, I don't know why it's making that funny shape. Or oh, why it's not filling it in nicely. Uh, we are on fill. All right. And we'll just fill in. No, that's not looking very good at all. All right. Well, then we go with the old fashioned method, don't we? Hold. 
hold down shift as you select these possibly should have done it as we were going along but more fool me for not as long as you hold down a shift you're okay you don't have to hold it down when you're moving around the map just whenever you are clicking on it Got a solid rock layer. Always zoom out to check that you haven't stuffed up somehow. All right. There are a few that refuse to be filled in. They will be hunted down and destroyed. This one. And this one. That one. No. That one. That one. That one. And that one. Giants on the warpath. Certainly sounds like it. All right. Fill them in. And there we go. Except for you three. Did I not press shift? I must have not pressed shift. Now these are, I'm not going to edit these out because they are genuine stuff ups on my behalf. And they will happen to you. It's part of the wonderful joy, the wonderful frustration that you have with working with a digital medium. Sometimes it does precisely what you tell it to do. rather than what you'd like it to do. Nope, doesn't want to select that one. All right, each in turn gets its own fill. All right, there we go. I can live with that. And that is the tutorial on how to draw a cave system plus a underground dungeon complex type of system, uh, at least certainly from my approach. You've seen how I look at it in terms of story as I go along, how I try and make sure that it sticks to some kind of plan, uh, sticks to some kind of logic in terms of its design. And... Uh, I hope that it has been useful and informative. So until next time, I wish you and yours the very happiest of mapping and gaming.